Today, I plan on replacing the chassis on my Bachmann big hauler locomotive. But first, I need a haircut. So back in 1992, when our oldest son was two years old, I drove him down to Caboose Hobbies in Denver to, to purchase a train set to put around the Christmas tree. And what I ultimately purchased was and it was the Rocky Mountain Express set which included the Rio Grande Southern engine locomotive number 25 along with a boxcar, a tank car, and a caboose as part of set 90015. As time went on we replaced the track with LGB track, added more track, eventually put a siding on and a spur, the train wound up outgrowing the Christmas tree and every year would get relegated to being set up on the floor in the family room. Then an additional son, so two sons, and then it became a, a family tradition every year to go down to the basement and pull out the train and the track. <clears throat> the kids would, would uh, clean up the track while we listened to Christmas carols. And it became, it became quite a thing. Oh, and we also added uh, KD couplers. So it got used that, that, year, that way every year until the kids were, oh, I don't know, in their, probably in their really in their early teens, to be truthful. And then, of course, the, eventually the, the train didn't get used very much. Fast forward, 20, fast forward to last year, 2019, now I have a grandson who happened to be two years old. So we bust out the track. My younger son was home for the holidays, so he helped me clean up the track and so on. We put a simple oval around the tree. But lo and behold, the locomotive just didn't run like it used to. So then I embarked upon tracking down some repair parts. And here's what I found. So after Christmas last year, I searched the internet and I found the Bachman Trains website. And in particular, a lot of information provided by Loco Bill Canolis, who seems to be a prolific uh, poster to this uh, forum. And he actually talks specifically about Rocky Mountain Express set 90015 and provided a link to another post that he did, which as you can see, is quite extensive. I'll post a link to these, uh, these forum posts below. But in particular, what he, what he dis discussed was that I have version, a version two chassis for the big hauler 460, which was, was produced between 1990 and 1994. And it's identified by the fact that it has a smooth bother, bottom cover and you can turn to drivers by hand. So what he recommends in all of this, actually, is that Bachman produced a standard chassis, which is what's, what's underneath my locomotive, but they also had some anniversary locomotives. And in particular, they had a version five and a version six uh, chassis. So I found the, the a version six chassis, which you'll see in this photo, has a lot of extra detail, specifically in the valve gear, and it's all made out of metal, including the side rods. But this particular chassis was no longer uh, was no longer available, and it appeared that it was on back order. So this was actually item number 81093. So I had I had clicked on the I had clicked on the little notification button at that time with the hope that I would actually be notified when this became available. In the meantime, I placed my locomotive on the shelf, hoping to get a notification. And since it got to be like October, I thought I'd better revisit this. So I went back over and 
lo and behold, what I discovered that the, the Series 6 anniversary chassis were no longer available. Now, it turns out that the standard chassis, 90098, is probably the correct chassis um, for my locomotive, as you can see pictured here. But it has it still has the plastic valve gear and side rods, and of course it has a gold handrail and so on. So it's not exactly the right chassis, but it's probably more it's probably the more correct replacement for the, the locomotive that I have. So what I did actually is I did a little more search on the website and actually posted to the forum and, and Bill, local Bill himself responded and actually suggested either this chassis or a Series 5 anniversary chassis which uh, which doesn't have quite as much detail in the valve gear but it still has metal valve gear and side rods. The only downside is is that it has different color steam chests, it has a gold handrail, and it has it has a, a different cow catcher, which Bill assured me that I can I can replace with the one that's on my current locomotive. It also does not have the wiring and switch for the, the smoke for the smoke box, which I'll have to um, salvage off my existing locomotive. Anyway, I went ahead and purchased one of these chassis which I received um, which I just received I'll provide a link below so here's a top-down view of my current model and uh, as you can see it's it's a little worse for the wear it's been sitting on my shelf here in my office since last Christmas but you know it's got some wear and tear it's been used quite a bit in particular, I'm missing the pop valve, which Bachman Online Trains is out of stock on. You can still get the, oddly enough, you can still get a replacement whistle and a bell. And before I, uh, before I start disassembling the model, I thought I would just bring in my, bring in the replacement chassis so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the detail about this in a bit. My first impressions of, of the, this new chassis is, is it's quite a bit more substantial. It, it has a, an extra connector on the back to go out to the tender to, um, for, the, for, the re, uh, for the backup light. I went ahead and bought a, uh, an extra cable that'll allow me to hook that up as well. This, this chassis has a reversing switch which I'll need to cut a hole in the smoke box to accommodate that and it does not have connections for the smoke unit nor for the headlamp which I'll have to do myself. So if I rotate my, my model on its side maybe focus a little better hopefully and the new chassis on its side you know, a couple, couple of things that I can point out here which, which I may cover again <clears throat> this is the anniversary version 5 chassis which has metal side rods and metal valve gear. The, the wheels themselves are very similar to what's what's on my current model but there's some additional detail here that's that's made out of metal which is kind of nice uh, like for example these this the sand the sanding uh, pipe is, is cast into the side on this model but here they're actually metal and then I got some you know, additional piping and so on. So th the next step is to uh, remove the chassis from my current model. So the first thing I want to do is remove my whistle just so that I have less stuff that I'm crushing. I have the, uh, the vent for the, the generator which I think I can leave be. The other thing I wanted to mention here is that I had previously wired up the, the tender lamp well, for directional lighting, just using a piece of speaker wire. So right now my, my tender is, is still kind of tethered by that cable. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to flip this, my model over and just remove the screws that I need to. 
There's a couple of screws, obviously. The I got these two back here, which I need to remove. And I just I just set the I just set the screws in a, in a tuna fish can, so I don't lose them. There's a a couple of screws sort of down in here that go through the the air tanks. And what I'll do here is I'll just I'll just loosen those up for now, and then I'll I'll pull those out after I disassemble. And then one more screw has to be removed, which is which is this one here underneath the front uh, truck. This so this screw is this screw is kind of longish, so I'll go ahead and remove that. And then the other thing that'll happen is the these rails here, these will get popped off. So so now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to I'll see if I can do it on the side here. In fact, I can I can pull these guys out like so. That may be the right way to go. So I'll slowly pull this whole thing apart. So the air tanks come loose. One of the challenges is going to be, as, as you can see, is I have I have some wiring that go between the the boiler cab unit and the chassis itself. So I wanted to just talk about this here a little bit. So so my my engine has a smoke unit, and then it also has. Um, a headlamp. So I'm gonna have to, to pull all this stuff off here, and also you need to you need to move the weight over. <clears throat> so just briefly, years ago I had actually installed directional lighting on my on my engine, and what I what I did is is I installed a a little diode array to to do the steering. For the for the uh, grain of weed lamps, and also to provide two diode drops to give me the correct voltage for 1.5 volt grain of weed lamps. Now, it's, modern versions of this locomotive actually come equipped with LED lights, but I um, I elected to go ahead and and continue to use my my diode array. So I will need to pull this out, and because of the way it's wired. It's actually wired in series with the motor. And if anybody's really interested still in how these um, diode arrays work for directional lighting with old style incandescent grain of wheat bulbs, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll be happy to put together um, an additional uh, video for that. So the other thing I'll need to do here is to remove this weight so I just pull out these two screws, and then it'll expose the motor, so I can kind of compare the the old versus new chassis. So this this has these short two little short screws, and as you can see here, it's just a cast weight. I'll just set that aside for now, and then it's got a couple of um, kind of little bumpers, I think, just to keep the the weight from jiggling around. So I'll pull those off because we'll need to reuse those as well. <clears throat> so what, what you can see here, there's a couple things to note. Is and, I'm, and I'll I'll discuss this a little bit more. This this has got this uh, this little can motor here. You can't really see any part of the drivetrain right now. The other thing I wanted to mention is it's got it's still got the this has got the smoke, excuse me, the sound unit on off switch. And then it's got the, the connector that goes out to the sound system, which is in the tender. But the old style one does not have the additional connector. So let me just let me just flip the boiler over to the other side. And let me bring in the, the new chassis. So you can kind of see those side by side. So you can see here now, I have an additional connector which, uh, which, which, which is actually currently wired up to run the, the, uh, the lamp in the back of the tender. And as I mentioned earlier, it's also got a reversing switch, which is used to be compatible with different standards and would really be handy if you had um, multiple locomotives running on the same track. And if you can see down inside, 
this this drivetrain uses a, a worm gear drive, and the motor is actually a little bit longer, so it's a different it's just a gift, different gear train. And on my old my current chassis, um, the, it does not have a worm gear, so in theory you can actually rotate the drivers. The way you can kind of tell before pulling it apart, if you rotate the drivers, the motor will actually backspin. But part of the reason I'm doing this, actually the whole reason I'm doing this, this change, is that the drivetrain is really wore out. And the, 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 the main drive gear is actually slipping on the axle currently. And the, the side rods are plastic on this, on this uh, model. And, you know, things are starting to just kind of get gummy. You know, I've cleaned them all up and everything and tried to re-lubricate re with plastic compatible grease. Um, but it's it's still still uh, problematic. So I'm going to the new chassis to alleviate all that stuff so I have a re reliable running model. So anyway, the, the main difference on uh, between the, the new chassis and the old chassis is the side rods, which is kind of really makes for a ni much nicer model. And I, I popped this, this, this thing off, which I'm going to have to re-glue. So you can see here, there's, there's quite a contrast. I don't know if the, how well the camera is going to pick this up. But this is all metal. Um, and it looks, just looks a little bit nicer. It's actually got the grease caps on, on, on there and so on. It's got the metal side rods, which I really like. And it even has these nice, you know, prominent hex nuts and stuff like that. Beyond that, the, the gear train, uh, the wheels themselves are, are the, the same as, as, as is the front. Um, and then I may pull it apart to show the the, 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 the drivetrain that the, the improvement that's been made. It also has um, this this nice, I presume brass, but at least metal detail up here. Well, the old one has just had a plastic one. Now you'll notice the cow catcher is actually not the correct version for my my train, my locomotive. So my plan is to remove this cow catcher, the old one. And, and put it on the new chassis, and then I'm going to have to touch up. I'm going to have to touch up the front with some silver paint, uh, which which uh, just because it's been scuffed up. Now the other the other difference is you'll notice, maybe it's not that clear, that the, the front of the cylinders and, and the back are painted silver, which is not maybe a, that important of a detail to me, but the the one thing that I will change is that. The, the steam chests on this particular chassis are painted green, which w which just wouldn't look right for my model. So I'm going to need to, to paint paint to paint over this black. Okay, so just uh, the recap. I got a I got I got a couple things I need to do. I'll need to break the the connection on the motor so I can put my diode array in series with the motor. I'll need to cut a hole in the smoke box to accommodate this reversing switch and then figure out how I'm going to install it, um, whether I use screws or I just glue it in there. And then I need to hook up the smoke box unit. I'll repaint a few things and then reassemble. Here I went ahead and just pulled pulled apart the bottom plate because I need, I need to actually unsolder my diode array from where it's connected to the motor on this locomotive. But I thought it might be instructive just to show what's going on with, with this uh, you know, the, the version 2 drivetrain. So you can see here, you know, it actually just has a little, has a little sort of spur gear that then drives everything. So that's why they say, you know, you can back drive this thing like so. And, uh, but what's happened on this particular locomotive is that I can actually spin this gear now on the shaft and things are just kind of getting gummed up. And part of the reason for that as you can see here, the journals on this this particular locomotive are are literally just the the, the um, side rails on the plastic chassis. You can see there's there's no the bearing surface is just the axles themselves, which I you know I kept lubed up pretty good using a plastic compatible grease, and uh, you know they just they just set in these pockets, so that's the bearing surface. The other thing you'll notice is that this is these are the contacts. They rub. They just these are the you know contacts here, and they just rub up against the inside surfaces of the of the wheels. And actually, that that actually worked fairly well all those years, but they are starting to get worn a little bit thin. Then for the sound unit, you got these little. And it works the same way on the new chassis as well. 
but they actually were starting to get worn through these little fingers here. So, um, you know, this locomotive, uh, you know, saw quite a bit of use. But what I need to do here, like I mentioned before, I need to, I need to disconnect my diode array from the input side of, my, of the motor. I removed my, my diode array from the old chassis, disconnected the, the grain of wheat lamp from the front, which I guess I didn't really need to do. Um, but I just wanted to have this thing separate. I disconnected the backup light from as well. But I thought while I'm here, I would kind of show the differences about the drivetrain. And in particular, what I think is worthwhile is notice the journals. Okay, we now actually have we now actually have bearing surfaces, actual bona fide bearing surfaces for the for each of the wheels. So that's that's substantial. And the other thing that's quite nice is look at the pickups. Uh, and I realize things are a little hard to see here, but these are the actual fingers, right? You can see here that actually rub on these these surfaces here and here and here and here. So. It's, it's a much more robust drivetrain. So another step, modification I had to make to my, uh, to my, my boiler actually, is I needed to cut a second hole in the smoke box door to accommodate the second switch. So my locomotive originally came with just a switch to turn, turn, off, turn on and off the smoke unit, which I removed. But the new chassis also has a, a reversing switch which is meant to be mounted behind the, the boiler door. Now, the newer versions of these chassis or newer locomotives come with a door that accommodates two switches. And in fact, the Bachman Trains online store lists a replacement part that has both holes cut, but they were out of stock. So what I did here is I just, I just marked the, the outline of the rectangle I needed to cut. I drilled two holes in the corners using a a small drill and a pin vise, and then I just I just wound up scoring the the lines through until I, I cut all the way through, and then I went back and I cleaned up the edges with a square file. Now on the back side, there were these there were these two bosses that were glued on or maybe molded in that had the holes drilled in it to to allow for the switch to be mounted inside like so. I, I realized that I it, the the length of the the handle on the switch is long, long enough to where it would interfere with the with the door, so I kind of needed to recreate the same thing. I found some some sprue from an old model kit that was about the right diameter, and just using a a saw blade and a miter saw, I was able to just cut a couple of discs, and then I just glued them down using. Um, liquid cement let it dry overnight so the next step is i will i will drill drill out the center and i, I had some smaller relatively small screws and then i'll put those in and install those as well so i finished assembling my model and i thought i would just go over the, the final steps so while i had it all apart i went ahead and washed the boiler and cab and the original cow catcher just using soap and water in the kitchen sink. And then I went ahead and painted the parts that I needed to. So I painted the end caps on the cylinders silver. I painted the steam chests semi-gloss black. A little surprised at how shiny it turned out actually, but it'll be perfectly fine. I moved the cow catcher over from the, the original model and before I did so, I, I painted the front edge of it white. I had mistakenly stated that that was silver earlier, but it, it turns out it's actually supposed to be white, which is what I used. In order to, uh, to install the braces between the boiler and the platform, I had to drill holes in the platform. And thankfully, Bachman had the foresight of providing pilot holes, which are small which I was able to just enlarge using a, a small drill and a pin vise. Before assembly, I had to determine which side of my diode where I went forward versus back. So I just, I just hooked up the power supply, just clipped it onto the, the front truck wheels while I had it upside down, 
to verify which direction was which. Got the, uh, the headlamp connected, the smoke unit, and the, the cable going to the tender, all connected. I didn't get around to fabricating a new pop valve. There's a chance it's still down in the basement in the box with the track and so on, so I'll see if I have it. If not, I'll, I'll just make one. I was thinking actually I could just make one out of a piece of, piece of uh, sprue. Uh, I could even just take a file, I think, and just make, a, make something that looks like what I've seen in the pictures. I needed to reinstall the weight. And as it happened, the, the way the weight was initially installed in the original model, it had some interference with the new drivetrain. But what I discovered is that I could install that weight upside down because there's plenty of, plenty of room in the boiler. It might be slightly top heavier than it was before, but it's exactly the same weight. I needed to use longer screws. The original screws were quite short, and the bosses that are provided to, to install the weight are quite a bit shorter on this chassis. So I, I purchased, just purchased some number four one inch long sheet metal screws. And the other thing I realized after I got, just before I put the, uh, the model together, is that I needed to cut an additional opening in the back wall to accommodate the extra connector that goes out to the tender. So the, the first connector, the original connector, is for the sound unit, which also has a switch to turn it on and off. But now I have a new connector that goes to the tender to power up the light. And I have that connected to my diode array as well, so I had to cut. I had to cut that. Uh, I had to cut that opening. I also had to to, to finish uh, attaching my uh, reversing switch and so on, so which I installed in the smoke box here. So the lower switch is an on-off switch for the smoke unit, and I I cut op cut this opening for the reversing switch glued on a couple of bosses on the back, and then I was, I was able to drill out the center of those. I had some small screws, which I had to file to length and install, and I think that worked out okay. Um, and, and I know which switch is which simply because the, the uh, opening that I cut for the new switch is a little bit rough compared to what, what was there originally. So that's how I'm gonna determine which, which, which uh, which switch to flip. <clears throat> so I also had to modify the tender a little bit. <clears throat> so I purchased this cable from the Bachman Online store along when I, when I bought the chassis. And what's nice about this cable is it's also marked with the word light. And of course it's compatible with the connector, which is nice. It didn't have this piece of heat shrink on it which I added just to match the original cable, and I cut them about the same length. I drilled a hole in the front boss to match the one on the other side, so they look about the same. And then on the, on the bottom side, I, um, I, drilled, I drilled a hole in the frame member to, to match what was which, which was previously done for the the sound unit. So that you know, in addition to just washing washing this with soap and water, that's really all I needed to do on the uh, on the tender. So anyway, there's my um, there's my complete model, and of course I I, I, I put up a um, a couple of sections of track and tested it just running it back and forth here on my bench and it, it worked it's, I can tell it runs way better than the than the the last chassis did after it was so tired so based on the construction of this chassis I suspect we'll get we'll get many many years of use out of this uh, this locomotive especially given that we use it only at Christmas time so if you have an older model that uh, you know isn't running well, it's getting a little tired perhaps, and uh, you'd like to refresh it, um, I, I would recommend you know, checking out the Bachman online store and seeing what they have available. And the other thing is I do know that they do run sales from time to time. And I, I, I purchased this for the, the full price 
just because I was I was not patient enough to um, to wait once I finally decided to get this done. But I think with a little bit of patience, uh, these these chassis can actually be had for uh, for a for a pretty significant discount. So that is it. I've completed replacing the chassis on my Bachmann Big Hauler 460 locomotive. I'm happy with the way it turned out, and I think it'll work well for years to come. I went ahead and put it back on the shelf here in my office. I'll just leave it there until we're ready to use it at Christmas. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and comment down below either way. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer those to the best of my ability. If you'd like to see more of this type of video from me, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you do, you'll get to see me in the next video.